Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to speak about Mars and Cancer squaring the lunar nodes. Before I do that, let me set a little foundation by just looking at the core transits over the next couple of months. So as always, moving through an entire sign, much less retrograding back into that sign, there are many phases and nuances. The most important phase right now for sure is this square to the lunar nodes, which is active for the majority of September, you can say. Let's move forward a month. Mars is square in Chiron. And after that square to Chiron, Mars moves into opposition to Pluto, and it maintains an opposition with Pluto for a solid four months. When it's not opposing Pluto, it's going to be square in Chiron um, even next year. So we're going to have a lot of very strong, visceral, engaging, instinct, instigating evolutionary activity with this Mars. We will be delving into that more in the future. For right now, this first phase, so to speak, in the very early phase of Mars and Cancer, is this square to the nodes. Whenever a planet squares the nodes, I always give it a lot of attention. And the slower moving that body is, the more relevant, the more significant, the more um, impactful and expressed this will be in our lives. And it's going to manifest over a longer period of time. Mars square in the nodes is a very important archetype. Mars corresponding to choice points, how we're choosing to initiate and respond to experience, the nature of its square to the nodes is always going to elicit within us the possibility of a significant maturation and growth in the kinds of choices that we're choosing to offer to our life experiences. It's usually somewhat challenging and instigating on some level in the sense that we're going to face content and responses that we haven't yet learned. So let's speak about what this means relative to this particular configuration. Review my last talk, if you'd like, on my basic intro to Mars in Cancer. It's important to recognize in general that Mars in Cancer has two orientations. There's emotional reactivity. I feel this way and I'm going to act on it. And then there's sort of this more matured emotional self-leadership to notice what we're experiencing emotionally and to choose conscious responses. The issue with the square between Mars and Cancer relative to Libra is this. Think of how a child basically needs and expects the parental figure to tend to whatever they're needing. I'm hungry, I'm crying, I'm angry, I'm afraid. They don't know what to do with their emotions, so they're dependent on someone else to regulate them. Right? Emotional regulation is not yet possible for a baby or a very small child. So the parent needs to be able to play a kind of role where they're holding a space of clarity and balance within themselves so they can be present and allow for this individual to discharge and move through their experiences, right? It's important that the parent does not become dysregulated or that the parent is able to regulate themselves. Now, take this dynamic and bring it into adulthood. We can have Mars and Cancer relative to this Libra South node and we have the apex of codependency. I'm uncomfortable with what I feel. I'm fundamentally insecure and I need you to make me feel better. And if I'm irritated, I'm going to feel very threatened. So there might be a sort of violence in, and this can express in two ways. Either one might express a sort of violence in relationships um, relative to the perception of not being loved, not being wanted, not being accepted, not being cared for, right? In the ways that we're needing nurturing and care from other people, it can elicit a sort of untamed, violent reactivity. Or we can find ourselves in relationships where we're playing more of that Libra role and we're holding it down for another person's visceral emotional dynamics. And so much of this can speak to our own early life conditioning. Like, this is happening for everyone. Where is it happening in your chart? This is going to express itself in some form or another. And the key here, though, with this Mars and Cancer relative to that Libra South node is what are the ways in which we might be perpetuating unhealthy and immature and codependent style relationship patterns in our lives where we're just expecting ourselves or other people to take care of everything that we feel or everything that other people feel. Note as well that Ceres right here, which recently stationed direct and is actually moving towards Pluto, um, will be a part of this Pluto-Mars opposition as well, is very active. This is also squaring the nodes. This can really speak to a where are the people that are going to take care of me? Like the absence or the lack of that parental grounding authority figure that is going to hold my hand and protect me and teach me the ways of life. 
there can be a deep sense of emotional instability and wanting to be cared for and protected by another or playing that role. And just think for imagine how easy it is in relationships to say, I'm expecting you to have my back no matter what. And no matter how I'm behaving, I need you to agree with me, right? I need you to be on my team. How easily that gets confused with love, right? Like we might not agree always with the people that we're in relationship with. And our loving and caring or being committed or present for other people isn't proven or determined by a sort of codependent agreeing with or being what another person needs us to be in whatever whimsical emotional moment is needed, right? So we can't really expect that of ourselves or of other people because we have different needs. We always have to honor our own individual reality and acknowledge that unity and togetherness doesn't mean we're going to meet every single person's needs or demand that of others. The, the, the challenge with that Mars and Cancer relative to the Aries North Node is you're not the only one here, right? So you might feel very threatened or scared of other people not being there for you or feeling unwanted or feeling unsupported or rejected or abandoned. And that Aries is, I'm angry and I'm going to act and behave and do and say whatever I want. So again, imagine in a relationship, you're not happy with another person's behavior and you're expecting them to show up for you in a particular way. That Aries North Node is no longer relational. It's no longer relating from, hey, where are you? What are you able to do? What do you want? What are your needs? Fundamentally, what's balanced? What's healthy? It's more, I have this immediate demand of you. So again, we could be playing either of these roles. And you might already kind of know what sort of predisposition you might have. And to see, again, where these Aries Libra dynamics are, where's Cancer, and where are Venus and Mars as well in your own natal chart. With Mars and Cancer, look at your moon. How are you familiar with integrating your emotional experiences? How do you know how to feel and be with the inner space of meeting difficult moments? How do we tend to and take care of ourselves and nurture ourselves and allow other people to nurture us? So the crisis that can manifest with this Mars in Cancer is a kind of flip-flopping. Like, oh, I feel so good. I'm loved. I feel connected. I'm afraid. I'm angry. I'm in separation. Or, okay, the, I'm, I'm, I'm taming someone else's dragon. They feel okay now. So I feel a sense of affinity and connection. And I'm so afraid of violence. I'm so afraid of separation. I'm so afraid of them not being happy with me that I'm going to constantly tend to their own emotional reality. Do you see that dichotomy? It's a strong polarization between these Libra and Aries energetics with Mars and Cancer at the crux. And so the teaching with Mars and Cancer being emotional self-leadership, other people are not responsible for how we feel. And within the context of a relationship, what we give and share with each other is a matter of mutuality and consent. It doesn't matter what the relationship is. We ultimately are agreeing to how we want to show up. Many times we're sort of making these unspoken agreements and these expectations for ourselves and others. And I think that series really brings this sort of deeper gravity of reflection. Have I committed to a structural reality that feels authentic for my soul? Am I holding myself or others in sort of this fixed position where we're not really free to reference our own inner authority? We're needing to be something that is expected of us from the outside or that we believe we need to be. So there's so much beauty and intimacy and growth in this signature and acknowledging within the context of every relationship, we have to honor that I'm going to have feelings. I'm going to be angry. I'm going to feel charged. I'm going to feel activated. And how we work with that within relationship, how we tend to that, that's how we deal with conflict. That's how we communicate. These are basic relationship skills. But embracing that Aries North Node means in the end of the day, one, I'm responsible for my own vibration. I'm responsible for my own choices. And do I want to choose reactions that actually will create more disharmony and chaos and disconnection and hurt? We will feel guilt and, and sort of grief within our own soul if we act in a place of separation. One of the quickest ways to actually hold on to a grudge isn't so much when another person acts negatively towards us, but when we act negatively towards them. Our minds get stuck in sort of this resentful place. They are treating, right? But actually, if we're not choosing how we want to respond and how we want to meet it with agency, with leadership, with respect, 
self-respect and respect of others and who they truly are, not identifying them with their lower ego dynamics, we can find ourselves free or freeing ourselves from these lower vibrations of kind of this perpetual resentment. That's something that I find over and over again. I tend to hold these deeper grudges when I act out of alignment, not when others do. It's really fascinating. So we honor that we are needing to embrace and respect our own freedom and our freedom to choose, and which also says, I'm not stuck, right? I'm not bound by something. I'm not like Mars and Cancer can either be like, I need you to stay in bed with me all day, or, well, I really want to go and do something else, but I feel like they need me to stay in bed with them all day. We see this in children, right? They, they, they want us to hold them and be with them, but they also don't want to be smothered. They need their freedom, but they need to know that we're there and that we really care and that we're going to protect them and be there for them. We are just like that. And we can, again, find ourselves on either of these patterns or extremes. To know our agency and freedom. Here then says we can come back to relationship within that space of self-responsibility. I am responsible for my own emotions and my feelings. And on a deeper level, and this is the crux, everything that I'm feeling is pointing me towards something. Why am I experiencing that? That's a deeper soulful why that we look into with Mars underneath the reactions and the desires and the impulses. What's really going on here, right? The more we can stay in a place of agency and leadership, it's going to free us up to generate even better actions. Like every place that we feel stuck ultimately is pointing us back to more freedom more possibility. And I think it's very important that we learn how to communicate and share and express what we're needing, what we're going through, while coming from a place of self-respect and self-agency. Otherwise, if we're just needing another person to be the parent that we wished we had or whatever, we may not get the kind of response that we want. This is not about being alone, but we need to embrace being alone. This is not about other people can't support us, but we need to learn how to be intimate and available for ourselves. That's sort of the beautiful paradox and sort of the gift and the gem, the teaching of this journey of awakening. We're here to learn of our strength and our power. And this never means I'm denying relationships and needing other people. Definitely not. But nor is it um, the codependency of losing our alignment and agency within relationship. We can't do this alone and we do need each other. There is such a deep thread of togetherness on this journey. But that never comes to the detriment of our own eternal, unspeakable power and agency. So we show up in relationship as a whole being, respecting one another as a whole being and bowing with thanks and gratitude for the gifts that only we can give each other. And that is vibrationally very, very different than expecting another to do the work for us or doing the work for someone else. A hugely important distinction. We are a gift for one another. Think of it as we are medicine for one another. And when you drink the medicine, you do it with respect, with prayer, with acknowledgement and appreciation. So... Bringing this full circle, this can deepen intimacy and the possibility for greater relevancy and connection within our relationships, but it's necessary to learn how to be with ourselves. It's necessary to learn how to choose to regulate or to be with thoughtfully and consciously what we're experiencing and to choose our responses. All kinds of possibilities will open up. Now, again, because this Mars is going to pass this square, Let's progress this on a month, uh, week by week basis. Because we're passing the square and moving into a very strong Chiron square and then this Pluto opposition for, again, four months, we're entering into a very visceral, perhaps volatile territory with a lot of psychological content. Some of our deepest security patterns and fears might be threatened. Am I being betrayed? Am I abandoned? Do I have what I need? Am I okay? Am I safe in life? Am I really being threatened? Am I really safe? Like These are the core dynamics that might be emerging for many of us. And what a gift. Right? There's such a, a deep teaching and healing that is available in these transits if we're willing to see it in that way. A great Mars teaching that I receive, which I will repeat here, is every experience in its highest interpretation or understanding serves to affirm and respect the fact of your freedom. What a beautiful teaching to hold on to. And we think about Mars, which can be feeling very triggered, in this case, feeling very insecure. And of course, Mars 
when it goes into Leo. It's a whole other story. We'll get there. Um, this is an opportunity to know of our own security and for that security to become strengthened and stable. That always comes back to reflect in our relationships and the clarity and the healthiness and the congruency of the choices and agreements that we make instead of sort of bringing this unintegrated child into an adult context. The more we learn to respect and love and care for the deeply tender parts of ourselves, and to kind of see that including that is a part of our awakening, right? We don't have to like transcend it or ignore it or give into it. It's like it wants our love because this is like love, oneness, wants to say yes to all of it. So even the unawakened creature part of our being, even that wants to be said yes to, even that wants to be included. So what's hard and difficult and, and Visceral says there is a calling to love even more of yourself. And blessing is if we can understand it properly, we are here to support each other in that. But we have to understand that it's our work to do. This is about our choice to evolve and come to know ourselves and love ourselves, our whole selves, and all of our relationships in an even deeper and more committed way. Okay. So that's my basic reflection on this particular Mars squaring the lunar nodes. On this topic, I'm going to be having a class series coming up very soon on planets that square the lunar nodes. I'm very excited. So in the needle chart, this is a very rich topic. There is so much to unpack. When that shows up in the needle chart, there are many layers to unfold. And that planet and those nodes really represent a very vital and essential area of soul growth and learning for this lifetime. So in this class series, I'm going to take us through each planet, teaching on its meaning and its application to square the nodes with several examples. There's no one size fits all. You always need to see the total context of the chart. It's going to be a very rich learning experience, and I have a free intro class that is a requisite to this entire series. So check out the description below if you want to sign up for that. Once again, the EA conference begins in one month. Check that out. I'm also available for sessions, soul to soul, individual, couple sessions all in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching.